Okay, so let's get started. Welcome everybody, my name is Juan. Uh, I have plenty of bad ideas, and today I'm going to present one of them, which is Easy Sheet. Uh, it's a just-in-time uh, compilation library for C++, for C++ codes. So uh, this is actually a library for runtime code generation. It's not a virtual machine. It's not going to magically optimize your code and appear out of nowhere, an instrument, and start doing its thing. It's not a read evaluation print loop, and it's certainly not the building blocks for building something uh, from higher level like uh, LLVM does. This is simple, uh, simply a library for runtime code generation. And it has some constraints that I wanted to, to do. It has to be types, a type safe wrapper around the, the LLVM. So you are not going to be managing uh, function pointers and casting things out and in and out and stuff like that. It has to be easy to understand, and it has to be clearly, clear and controllable. So it's a library that has one function and one abstraction in total. Uh, it's also, um, the, the front end, the language, has to remain unmodified. But I actually need some help from the compiler to do this, so I had to plug in inside the, the LLVM. I will later show you how. And finally, this is a hobby. This is not uh, my work, even if I can do it, uh, I can contribute to it during work time. So it has to be fun, and that's imperative. If it's not fun, many choices that I took for this library are not uh, regarding uh, features, or rather as I thought it was fun to implement it. So why um, to implement EasySheet? Uh, have you ever used a just-in-time compilation library for C++? Can you raise the hand? Exactly that, exactly why. Typically, there are not many just-in-time compilation libraries for C++. And normally, you need some compiler knowledge to start diving inside them. So let's see an example to understand more or less how this library works. So here we have uh, an image kernel. Uh, this is a classical uh, kernel computation. The outer three loops will scan all the pixels on an image. The inner loops will scan the neighborhood of a pixel and will perform some computation. If by any chance we knew the values of all these, of all these parameters, the compiler may be able to further optimize this code. But typically, at compile time, you don't know them. Furthermore, if we knew the values that mask uh, takes, that this array contains, we may even be able to go further but at compile time, again, these values are not there. They are there at runtime. And let's consider this invocation of the, of the kernel function. I don't know here uh, if you know uh, stdivine. Are you familiar with uh, the stdivine from C++? I see some heads doing like, yes. That's so cool because normally nobody knows about it. Um, Okay, so this function stdivine from the standard library will return a function object, and this function object, the, operator, the call operator of this function object will call the kernel function, will pass mask, mask size, and mask area as the first, second, and third parameter to the kernel function. Then the first parameter of the, operator, of the call operator and the second parameter of the call operator are going to be forward as um, fourth and fifth parameter for the kernel function, and so on for the, for the rest of the parameters. And the result is a function object that we can call, and it will be equivalent to, to this previous code. Okay, how does the easy sheet look like? Like this. It has one header file, easy sheet point h. And it has one function, easy jit. And it tries to mimic most of the behavior of the stdivine function. And the return object, it's a, it wraps, it's a function object that wraps a lot of LLVM stuff. When you call it, it's going to perform the appropriate cast and everything, and it's type safe. And it's going to call, and at this point is when the, we call the LLVM just in time compiler, we generate optimized code, but using the values of mask, mask size, mask area, and so on for the optimization, and we generate some optimized code. And why? Because it gives performance sometimes. 
So for example, in this case, the sheet function will perform 4.5 uh, times faster than the original version of the code. So on a video stream, that may be really cool because on a video stream, the, image the frame dimensions really do not change that often. Typically never. Okay, so how do we achieve this? So let's see an overview of the library. I said that this library needs some compiler help. So you grab your C++ code that calls CC sheets, and typically you compile it, for example, with, well, actually, you have to compile it with Clang, but you have to use a special Clang plugin, where it's not a plugin on the front end, it's a plugin on the middle end, on the optimizer of Clang. What this plugin does is that it will identify all the calls to easy sheet, it will see which functions are passed as parameters or may be passed as parameters to, to the easy sheet function, and it's going to embed the bit code of these functions in the final executable. Why? Because we will need it at runtime. At program startup, so when the, the pro, before the main function is called, we are going to register all the function pointers with the associated bit code. Then, when the easy sheet function is called, using the function pointers, we are able to recover the bit code implementation. We are able to replace the, the parameters by the actual values of the things that we are passing to call the LLVM just in time compiler and generate optimized code. We even have one optimization that it's able to, for the um, uh, virtual calls, for the virtual, uh, yeah, the virtual invocations, sometimes you are able to devirtualize the, the call and insert the actual, in line the actual function that you are calling, which can give performance sometimes. This bit code, the bit code that it's generated, it's compiled by the LLVM, and then all of this, we wrapped it in a, in a function object that it's opaque for the user, so the user does not need to know that there is LLVM behind it, except when compiling, and that's it. And this library has two big components. It has the plugin, which is not that big, and it has the C++ library. And I said the C++ library has one function, so let's see more or less uh, what does this function do. So this function, as you can see here, it has some weird uh, macro attribute that it's passed over there. That's to help the, the compiler plugin to quickly and easily identify which one is the easy sheet function because the names are going to be mangled and are not going to be easy to, to identify. But it's nothing special. Then, from the parameters that the function, that the easy sheet function, function receives, we are going to build what we call the context. The context contains everything that we need to perform just in time compilation, which is the function that we are specializing, which are the values of the parameters, and so on. Then, using the context, we are going to call the, to pass this to the LLVM to perform just in time compilation. The second part is rather straightforward, so I'm going to focus on the first one. How do we build the context? And if we dive into this function, in the bottom of it, just as a disclaimer, I'm rather a mediocre C++ programmer, so you will see things to correct me. So after that, you can tell me which ones. At the bottom of the, um, of the context um, generation, we will find functions like this, like setparam. So for example, if, we are, if the function is expecting an integer as a parameter, like here, it's going to cast the input parameter, it's going to assign the input parameter to a, the input argument to a parameter of the integer type, and it's going to register it in the context. Similarly, if it's a placeholder, placeholder like underscore one, underscore two, we are going to store which is the actual index that it's being passed, because we need to know it later when we generate the code for knowing how to forward the, the arguments. And let's see a case that it's a bit more fun than that. So easy sheet can take another, as a parameter for specialization, another object from easy sheet, because maybe you want to compose the things that you created. So if it's the input, the thing that it's being passed, it's a easy sheet uh, function wrapper, which is the object that uh, wraps the, the generated code. 
we're going to check if the associative function type, if we can assign it to the, to the expected argument, the expected parameter. And if it's possible, if it's not possible, we're going to show a, a fail, a fail the compilation. But if it's possible, we are going to register that in the context. And structures, also we can pass as parameters. And if it's a structure, we would like to ideally treat it as, as if it was a, a string of bytes. But we can expect that this does not work as, ex as expected. Why? Many reasons. One of the reasons is that there is padding between the, the fields of the structures, typically, which give some problems. And there is another complication. So imagine we have this uh, pair of t. And we have this function foo that takes two t's, just for exemplification. And we try to pass two pairs of int to the foo function. Then at the LLVM intermediate representation, we will have a call taking as parameters two integers. Why two integers? Well, apparently on the x86 underscore 64 ABI, if it fits on an integer, the structure that you are passing, and it's only the fields are aligned, you're going to pass them in registers, and you're going to pack everything in the smallest integer as you can. What happens if it's a pair of doubles? We, pay, we are going to pass each structure as two doubles to the function. OK, seems fair. What if we are passing a pair of pair of doubles? I know then it's going to be passed uh, through memory with some pointers. OK. But what's the problem with all of this? Imagine that someone tells you, OK, swap the arguments for a pair of doubles. And we have four arguments. And where does the first structure begin? And where does the second structure end? We cannot know it. And we have to capture this somehow. And this is dependent on the ABI. We are getting into scary territory. So the solution that I found for this is to introduce a, a function called a serialized, serialized argument that will take the structure by, by value. And it's going to return a car pointer with all the fields flattened. How can you implement this function? Not in C++, but that's why I have the compiler. So I can implement it on the compiler side. It can check, introspect the, the signature of the function and initialize correctly this, this array. And we can also register to the runtime that, OK, this parameter here, it's passed as uh, two doubles in the, to the call function, or if it's passed as a pointer, and et cetera. This last feature, it's currently on work. It's almost finished. It's almost there. I have to give it the, the last push. And there are some other stuff in the, in the sheet point h library. So for example, we have some options to control the, how the code is compiled. That can be useful to say, OK, compile with minus 03 or minus 0 or something else, or to affect how the compilation pipeline works. We expect to extend this, as you will see later. Why not have a code cache? So this uh, context object that I talk about, it's comparable. It's hashable. So this, I implemented a cache, a code cache, that it's implemented as a std unordered map. If no uh, template parameters are specified, it's going to use the context as the key of the map. So for example, if later we recompile this, we try to get to sheet another function with the same parameters, and it's in the cache, it's going to avoid recompilation and return directly the compiled object. And for threading, well, this is only C++. There is nothing special, no extensions to the language, no, nothing really weird. We can move the objects in and out and all around. So you can use your regular C++ constructs, and everything is supposed to work, and normally does. You can also have do some more fun. You can serialize your compile function into a string, send it through to a server, and the server loads this, compiles this, and starts executing it. Yeah, totally not a, a security danger. 
but you can do it. Um, as I said before, you can compose the generated objects uh, one with another one. So here, for example, the function, the function foo takes two integers a and b. We generate a new function foo a a that only takes one integer, and we are now able to pass the foo a a a a to the uh, map back function and obtain something specialized. Um, but now, let's forget about the compiler, the compiler, um, the C++ library, and let's talk a little bit about the, the plugin. So the plugin is actually really, really simple. And one of the ideas is that it has to be as simple as possible because it has to be fun and I don't want to maintain it. So what it does, so to use the plugin, you have to only specify one flag, minus x clang, minus load, minus x clang and the name of the library. And you're done, nothing special, nothing weird. And you can use your regular clang and it's supposed to work. Then we have to identify with this, what the, the main goal of the compiler plugin is to identify which functions are used by EasySheet. So for doing this, we see what are the types and the values that are passed to the, to the EasySheet function and we're going to, keep, to start going up on the, on the values that are assigned to it and we're going to try to discover which ones they are. And luckily there are some problems sometimes. So for example, if the function is declared in another compilation unit, the compiler is not really able to deduce. It's coming from another compilation unit. So it's not able to handle it. So now it's the job for the programmer to say, okay, yeah, this function here, export the, the bit code, or you can use a regular expression. And dot star, it's a regular expression where you export everything and it works. There is also one option in Clang called uh, F embed bitcode that embeds the bitcode of the entire application in the executable. I really, I know how it works. I know what it gives. I really haven't tried using it because in my vision of a just time compiler or uh, the use of the just time compiler, there are only a few kernel functions that you would like to recompile at runtime, not your entire application. But who knows, maybe the other one is the best approach. I don't know. One thing uh, is where this, uh, this library is going because it's really early and we are young. We want to have a lot of fun. So one of the obvious ideas to implement with a just time compiler is to say, okay, do profile guided optimization. That's why, that's the advantage that you have at runtime. So we want to add an extra option to specify, okay, yeah, this is my profile uh, data structure, Run a, create a profile version of the code. This profile version of the code will fill this profile data, data and then we can reuse what has been profiled to uh, re-optimize the code based on this profile data and perform some speculation. So with something like this, you could say, okay, yeah, I see that we are always calling the same function uh, indirectly. Well, here you have the bit code for that function, inline it, and you can get some extra performance like that. Uh, then in some really, the next objective will be to create um, a version that does this automatically. I find it scary, but maybe someone is uh, really happy to, to let the, the just in time compiler intervene whenever he wants. Like this, the, comp the function object will decide by itself that yeah, okay, instrument now. Yeah, no, now execute the optimize. Okay, recompile. Or recompile in a background thread and let's see what happens and so on. And the final objective, the goal objective that me and many people may have, and there are many doc doctorate theses on this topic, it's to perform partial evaluation. It's to say, okay, for example, we have the evaluate function that evaluates an AST on an evaluation of variables, and you say, okay, you know what? The AST is never going to change from now on. So it's immutable. Generate a version of the code that it's equivalent to compiling this, uh, this AST. And this is actually really difficult for what I'm investigating, but 
I'm moving forward on that, and it's uh, not easy. And we need to also introduce this notion of immutability, which means that the easy sheet of the function object created takes ownership of this AST, because if I didn't inline everything, every value that it touches, and somebody deallocates the memory for this subject, everything's going to crash and people's going to die, typically. And many more stuff. So for example, I didn't implement the support for methods, not because I didn't want to, it's because I'm not good at C++ and I did not find it fun, but it should be straightforward. For function objects, it should be also similar to for that for methods. It will be really nice to also implement, to continue with the cache and the data structures, to implement a threading uh, cache, uh, or a cache that supports at least um, serialization or, persist or persistence. I haven't implemented it because I didn't thought it was fun. It was fun. And there is, yay, there is a spin of, of easy sheet. So there is one guy who forked it, and it's using it to prototype an auto tuner for C++. And he's going to be presenting it in two weeks for the, um, during the LLVM developer meeting. So if you want to see his presentation, and if you're there, go. And yeah, when I join the fun, because easy shit, it's a fun project. I do it as a hobby, and if you want to contribute, it will be really cool because I'm looking to learn. So if you really like to enter into the LLVM, easy shit may be the project for you. Because it actually, it's really, the code that it takes as input is really simple. There are many low-hanging fruits. Uh, for example, the profiling and the optimization based on the profiling shouldn't be that difficult to, to optimize, to implement, and it's something that feels fun, at least for me. And maybe you are a really good C++ programmer, and maybe you even like to tell how someone got something wrong. I got a lot of things wrong in my, in my code. So yeah, easy shit, maybe the project for you. And everything is on GitHub if you want to check it out. Um, yeah, does anyone have some questions? Make it portable. shouldn't be really, I'm not using anything architecture or operating system specific. Maybe there may be, there may be some complications. Ah, I should repeat the question. So what's the, the footprint to, the question was, what's the footprint to port easy sheet to another platform? No, how, or, how big is the, yeah. how much bigger is your application compared to the previous Okay, how the question is how much bigger the application will be because you include the LLVM chassis and compiler and everything, right. yeah, really big, because you have to ship with the entire LLVM, yeah. That's a problem. I have some ideas of how to reduce, reduce it, but it's not really easy to, to do. And yeah, for the moment, I'm shipping with the entire, uh, well, a big part of LLVM within, which is not good, but yeah. Yeah. Probably, uh, so if you want to reduce the amount of optimization tasks that you need mm. to be executing, and of course you don't have to have tiny probabilities. Uh, I'm not shipping. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's not to ship Clang. It's the LLVM that it's shipped. And yeah, those are really great ideas that I have to try, like reducing the amount of targets that are shipped with the application because you are probably going to shoot for the same target that you're running. Uh, I mean, you are probably going to compile your code for the same target you're running on. So yeah, and reduce the amount of optimizations that will greatly reduce the, the size of the, because for now it should be around 40 megas, I guess, or 30 with the trim library and it's not something acceptable. Ah, okay. Yes. Hi. Um, so uh, obviously, the 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 uh, most prominent application of this kind of thing is is looped optimization, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
And uh, one piece of hardware that runs lots of loops is uh, our, our GPUs. And yeah. uh, the Clang frontend has support for CUDA. Uh, have you looked at what would be involved in jitting CUDA code um, for this kind of thing? I actually haven't checked, but that's a really interesting uh, use case. Any questions? Okay, thanks. <laughs>